If you enjoy what you hear here today, please consider supporting me on my Patreon page. Every dollar helps, and you get to see content that you won't see here. Chapter 7, Part 1 The Wedding Is my headdress on straight? It isn't on straight, is it? Why isn't it on straight? Why aren't you fixing it? I can't fix it because you won't stand still, panted Rarity, trying to catch Chrysalis as the changeling galloped around the dressing room in a panic, gown trailing behind her. Desperately, Rarity tried to use her magic to slow Chrysalis down by grabbing her tail. The only effect this had was to cause Chrysalis to drag Rarity behind her right up until the queen made a sharp turn and started running in the opposite direction. Rarity was flung across the room, her magical grip slipping off, and she landed in a pile of ponykins up against one wall. <laughs> Rarity managed to drag her way out, upside down, only to be met with the disapproving glare of the queen as she loomed above. While I appreciate your gift of these dresses, I wish you would take my concerns a little more seriously said Chrysalis snidely, looking down her nose at Rarity. I'm trying to make sure all your hard work looks good, but you seem to just be napping in a pile of... of... some kind of pony-shaped pillows. Well, if you would just hold still for three seconds... Rarity started to snarl, then stopped and took a deep breath. Element of generosity. Element of generosity. She reminded herself silently. I am trying to help you, dear, she said, standing up and patting her mane back into place with practiced ease. But I can't do that if you keep running all over the room. But, 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 hold still. Finally managing to get her hooves on the queen, Rarity held her in place and inspected the headdress resting on top of her head. Despite having just finished galloping around the room in laps, and the fact that she was now prancing in place, Chrysalis' headdress was still tightly fastened to her head, its gauze flowing down and twisting through her hair. It looks fine, said Rarity confidently. You're sure? I thought it looked crooked, said Chrysalis, worry audible in her voice. Chrysalis, that thing is pinned to your head so securely, you could get flung from the castle again, and it would stay on. A theory I am sorely tempted to test. After Rarity. Stop worrying. Okay, okay. <sighs> I'll try, replied Chrysalis meekly, the sound of her hooves still tapping on the floor under her dress giving lie to that statement. I just want it to look right. I want everything to look right. This, this day has to be perfect. I don't know what you're so worried about, said Rarity, spotting a gem on the gown that had come loose during the queen's jog. Retrieving a needle and thread, she worked on repairing it as she talked. I mean, you're already married to her. This is just a ceremony for show, a celebration so all of us can be a part of your happiness. Yes, but... But... The pace of her prancing picked up, and Rarity put a hoof on Chrysalis's back, more to hold her in place so she could do her work than to comfort her. I just need everything to go right today, said Chrysalis finally. It's... it's important. You said it's a ceremony, a way for all of you to join in. But that means if something goes wrong, it will happen in front of all of you. In front of all of Twilight's friends and family... If something happens, if the wedding gets ruined, she might call the whole marriage off. She might leave me and... And I don't know what I would do then. Chrysalis. Rarity smiled at the changeling, her heart melting at such a romantic display. Twilight would never do that. I see the way she looks at you when you're together. You drive her absolutely crazy. You really think so? sniffed Chrysalis, turning a pleading look on the fashion pony. Definitely. Why, even if she wasn't in love with you anymore, I doubt she would ever be able to even admit it. Not now that she's married to you. 
The poor dear doesn't have the heart to do something as cruel as that. <sighs> it wouldn't matter if she stopped loving me, declared Chrysalis, raising her head high. I would make her love me again, no matter what it would take. I would bring out all of my armies to raise any foes separating us. I would tear down any barrier keeping us apart with my own fangs. I would storm Tartarus itself just to get her back. That's, uh, <clears throat> that's the spirit, said Rarity with a small cough, snipping off the last of the thread and moving to put her tools away. Now, while we're on the subject of love, I was wondering if there might be any updates to that little matter we discussed. Hmm. Why, it turns out Prince Blue Blood may have a long-lost twin brother, said Chrysalis, an innocent smile on her face. His name might be, shall we say, Prince Green Blood? Hmm. Not as catchy as Blue Blood, but I can work with it said Rarity, grinning. Deep breaths! Deep breaths! Deep breaths! Twilight, would you please hold still? asked Sassy Saddles desperately. I'm trying to straighten your headdress, and I can't do that if you're panting like this. <laughs> what are you talking about? gasped Twilight, a strained smile on her face. I'm just breathing like I always do. You're panicking, said Nightlight, smiling and putting a hoof on her shoulder. Which is a perfectly normal reaction to have when you're about to get married. But she's already married, isn't she? Asked Sassy as she used a rag to wipe more sweat off Twilight's brow. Well, yeah, but this is different. It's a large ceremony with all of her friends and family present, not to mention her mentor, her mentor's sister, all of the elite of Canterlot, which seems to be a good portion of her wife's hive. All of them are staring at me, watching as I marry Chrysalis. And if I do anything wrong, if I really do freak out and lose it and let Chrysalis know how I really feel, it'll happen in front of basically everybody we know, not to mention all of Canterlot and her hive and all of Equestria by the next day. And if I thought she was going to react badly before, it's nothing compared to what will happen if I humiliate her today in front of the entire world! Now she was really panting, on the verge of hyperventilating, until her father put his hoof under her chin and gently moved her head to face him. I know it's not going to help, but I'm still going to tell you there's nothing to be worried about, he said, smiling. You do love her, don't you? I... Yes, I do, she replied. It was disturbing how much easier speaking that little untruth had become over time. Then don't worry. Everything will work out just fine in the end. You'll see, he chuckled. You know, I had cold hooves myself. I actually climbed out a window just before the ceremony and almost ran away. You did? gasped Twilight. She was so shocked she froze, staring at him, and Sassy Saddles took the opportunity to start adjusting her headdress again. I never heard anything like that. What happened? Nightlight smiled, caught up in the hazy nostalgia of a happy memory. As I was galloping around the church, I caught a glimpse of your mother through a window. She looked so beautiful in her dress, it <sighs> it reminded me of all the reasons why I'd proposed to her in the first place. So I turned around and went right back to my own dressing room. Twilight just gaped at him. And he laughed. <laughs> you know, they say seeing the bride in her dress before the wedding is bad luck. But I'd beg to differ. It's brought me nothing but good luck because it stopped me from making the biggest mistake of my life. It helped me stop my son from almost doing the same. And now my daughter, too. That finally put an expression on Twilight's face that wasn't surprise or terror, and she giggled. <laughs> Wait, Shining trying to run out on Cadence? <laughs> she asked, trying to smother her laughter with a hoof. 
<laughs> Technically, he didn't just try, said Nightlight with a wink. I saw the signs before Huff, and I was waiting outside his window when he climbed down. <laughs> oh, I am going to hold that over his head forever. He'll have to do what I say or I'll go straight to Cadence. You could do that, said her father, nodding. Of course, then he could go to Chrysalis and tell her how panicked you were getting before your wedding. You wouldn't! <laughs> hey, if it takes a little mutually assured destruction to keep my children in line, I'll just have to make that sacrifice. <sighs> Nightlight said, sighing dramatically. <sighs> Fine! Twilight growled out between clenched teeth. Nightlight chuckled, then gave Twilight a pat on the shoulder. <laughs> Feeling better now? He asked. Dad, listen. Began Twilight hesitantly. I don't love her! Part of her mind screamed. This was all a huge misunderstanding, and I made the mistake in not telling Chrysalis that in the first place. But I went along with it because I was afraid, and now I'm stuck choosing between breaking the heart of someone I really care about and going through with a loveless marriage that has benefits politically, and honestly, the idea has been starting to grow on me, but I feel like it's all out of my control, and everything just keeps getting worse and worse, and, and I just want my mom and my dad to please make it all go away. For a moment, those desperate words danced on the tip of her tongue, until finally, she swallowed them. What had happened was her mess to clean up or live with, and as a princess, it was her responsibility to do it herself. Besides, it had been a long time since she'd gone crying to her parents to fix all her problems. Almost as long ago, she realized, as it had been since the day the princess had taken her under her wing. So instead, she just said, Thank you, Dad. For everything. And pulled him into a hug with one foreleg. <laughs> That's my little princess. He said, the old pet name, now literally true, making her giggle. <laughs> now, are you ready to get married? I... Twilight took a deep breath. <sighs> you know what? I think I am. Those words were still in her head, mocking her as she waited for the ceremony to begin. She was fully dressed, waiting outside the hall while Chrysalis stood inside at the altar, and the guests finished filtering in. Her panic hadn't returned to its previous level, but there was still a pit of nerves tying itself into knots in her stomach. <laughs> I see you're nice and calm, said a voice in the doorway, and Twilight turned in surprise to find Shining Armor with a smile on his face. Shiny! She cried happily, trotting over as best as she could in her gown. Just came by to say good luck and make sure you weren't trying to fly out a window or something like Dad said you were. I haven't even tried to climb out the window yet, <laughs> she replied, sticking out her tongue. I heard you made it through, though. <laughs> so, Dad did tell you, huh? <laughs> he said, grimacing. Fine. Truce, then. Truce. Twilight shuffled on her hooves nervously. So is Cadence still... Still stuck in the Crystal Empire, said Shining Armor with a sigh. <sighs> she said she'd kill to be here right now. But, well... Running an empire's busy work, I know. Said Twilight, nodding sadly. Still, I wish she could be here. I mean, wedding, princess of love, and all that. Don't worry about it. I'm sure she has something huge planned for you two. Said Shining Armor with a grin. Then turned as the sounds of an organ warming up began to vibrate throughout the building. Whoops, I better get to my seat. Good luck, Twilight. I mean... <laughs> Not that you need it or anything. You're already married, but still. 
The next few minutes seemed to last forever. And then, far too soon, Twilight's father came to get her, and they were standing in front of the large doors leading into the wedding hall. The organ started playing the wedding march, and, taking her hoof in one of his, her father pushed the doors open with his magic and began to lead her down the aisle. Twilight made it one step and then halted as she caught sight of Chrysalis standing at the altar. Chrysalis's dress resembled the one Twilight herself wore. Both were of white silk, ruffled at the neckline, flowing up and over their tails to cascade down in ways to a short train ragged with holes, much like a changeling's mane and tail. Gems woven into the fabric of the gowns crisscrossed their bodies in alternating green and magenta hues. But that was where the similarities ended. Chrysalis's headdress was a gorgeous silver crown that fit to the shape of her head, curling around her horn and winding halfway up it. The headdress was held on by thin chains of silver, which disappeared in a complex net that wove its way through the mass of curled braids that her mane had become. Streamers of gauze, colored the purple and magenta of the stripes in Twilight's hair, were also woven throughout her mane. Twilight's headdress on the other hoof was a series of emeralds laid across her forehead, dangling from golden chains much the same as Chrysalis' silver ones. An offshoot of the chain spiraled up her horn, where another emerald hung from its tip. The rest ran back over the top of her mane, holding it down flat against her skull and then encasing the long, thick braid her mane had been woven into, before also ending in emeralds. And, much like her wife, streamers of gauze had been braided into her mane, though hers were the color of Chrysalis's hair. And her wings. Twilight's wings were decorated in a fairly simple style, with strips of green silk threaded between her feathers, holding on a gilded runner of lace along the leading edges. But along Chrysalis's back were large pieces of some iridescent material that shimmered like her gossamer wings. Through some trick, possibly Chrysalis slightly fanning her own wings as they lay down across her back, the faux wings were constantly flowing through the air. Twilight couldn't even tell which were her wings and which were part of the dress. As Twilight entered the room, a shaft of light from a sun perhaps a little too perfectly positioned came in through the hall windows and centered right on Chrysalis. Between the light glinting off her headdress and the light refracting through her wings, she lit up like the most splendid hearthswarming tree Twilight had ever seen. After a long moment... Nightlight leaned over. You may want to close your mouth, dear, he said, and then gave her hoof a gentle tug. And I believe we're supposed to be walking down the aisle. With only a slight stumble, Twilight managed to start moving again, albeit in a daze as she was unable to take her eyes off Chrysalis. She climbed the steps to the altar, a tremble in her hooves, and Chrysalis finally looked over as Twilight came to a shaky halt next to her. Chrysalis, breathed Twilight as the changeling looked down at her from half-lowered, slowly blinking eyes, a serene smile on her face. You... your dress. You look beautiful too, my love, said Chrysalis, her smile widening. Are you two ready for us to begin? asked Luna, and Twilight turned, blinking in surprise. She hadn't even noticed Luna and Celestia standing before the altar. Of course, said Chrysalis with a small bow of her head. Yes, Twilight managed to stammer out. Very well, said Celestia, giving them a beaming smile and then raising her head to include everyone in the hall in its glow. Dearly beloved... It was, Twilight heard later, a very beautiful ceremony. The tales of it that were carried out to the city and beyond went a long way towards accelerating the pony's acceptance of the changelings. Celestia's praise of Chrysalis' willingness to merge her kingdom with Equestria, even as a minor partner, certainly made an impact. So too did Luna's monologue on the power of love to light up even the darkest of hearts, 
A message that, given her history, was not lost on anyone. While neither point was exactly true, Twilight decided it was best overall to just let that slide. But then, she never heard either speech completely. Only in fragments and through second-hand retellings in newspapers. She spent the whole ceremony completely captivated by Chrysalis, unable to tear her eyes away from the changeling. Celestia and Luna's voices just a dull hum in the background. The only thing that finally caught her attention was hearing her own name. And do you, Princess Twilight Sparkle, take Queen Chrysalis Blade Queen to be your lawfully wedded wife for as long as you both may walk this world? asked Celestia, gazing solemnly at Twilight. I do, answered Twilight without hesitation, hardly aware she was even doing so. Then if there are any who would oppose this union, let them speak now, or forever hold their peace. Twilight's eyes widened, and she turned slightly to get a better look at the crowd. Her side of the aisle consisted mostly of friends and family, of course. This also now included K-85, who had more or less attached himself permanently to Spike. Sunset Shimmer and Starlight Glimmer were there, also, although the Sirens were not, a fact for which Twilight was grateful. She had decided not to bring them up, and Sunset hadn't mentioned them either. Boon Dancer, Minuet, and Lyra had come to wish her luck as well. Minuet and Lyra even despite their experiences at Chrysalis' last wedding. Twilight made a note in her mind to have Chrysalis apologize for that at the reception. A good deal of her guests, though, were Canterlot Elite. She hadn't particularly wanted to invite them, but as a princess, there were certain social responsibilities she had to fulfill. Considering how Chrysalis had treated them while imitating Cadence, snubbing them now would start things off on quite the wrong hoof, especially with the Changeling having become their newest princess. So, they had been invited as well, despite the fact that very few of them were actually happy for her or would truly congratulate her on the wedding. If anything, most of the nobles viewing the wedding saw it as a loss on their part, since it meant she was now unavailable to marry them or one of their relatives. And on top of that, there was now another princess who was also a changeling over them in the hierarchy of Equestria. So it was from this quarter that Twilight had expected to hear objections. Instead, while there was a bit of muttering that manifested itself as a low murmur, no one actually said anything out loud. Twilight turned back to the altar, somewhat surprised by the nobles' reactions. Perhaps they didn't disapprove of the marriage as much as she had believed. Or perhaps Celestia and Luna's speeches had soyed some of their thoughts. Or perhaps it had to do with the fact that Chrysalis' side of the aisle was packed tight with changelings, all of them radiating a very definite sense of approval with the ceremony. Very well. Then by my power, I hereby pronounce you wives said Celestia, a warm smile blossoming on her face. You may now kiss. Kiss? Twilight frantically thought. I completely forgot we have to... Chrysalis wrapped a gentle hoof around her neck and bent down, and Twilight's mind suddenly stopped as Chrysalis kissed her. Her lips shouldn't be so soft, was the last thought she had before they all faded away. Not with all that, Kitan. This wasn't the simple peck on the lips the Changeling had given her when they first came to Canterlot. Chrysalis' mouth pressed firmly against Twilight's, slightly open, needy and wanting, but not greedy. What little kissing back Twilight did, Chrysalis took and returned happily. Twilight couldn't help herself. Her eyes fell closed, her wings fluttered by themselves, and she just let herself go with the moment. After a time, Chrysalis finally pulled back. Twilight stood in place, swaying slightly, looking up into Chrysalis's eyes as the changeling gazed back. And for an endless moment, 
That was all that mattered. She didn't notice the wedding guests cheering and stomping their hooves. She didn't hear Ramadash's sonic rain boom going off overhead. Didn't see the Wonderbolts who had been pacing Dash turn into changelings and tackle her. For just that moment, her entire world consisted of chrysalis.